to Brute. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 traders in history. What happened? I'm not sure, to be honest. Hell of a birthday. Hey, don't despair. The day's not done yet. For this list, we're taking a look at the most notorious defectors, turncoats, and double agents, from biblical times to modern times. When did you last read 1984? <laughs> uh, actually, quite some time ago. Number 10, Joe Lieberman. Mr. President, uh, my fourth and final term as a United States Senator will soon come to an end. As I reflect on that reality, I'm the first to have many emotions. We added the applause because there was almost no one in the room. Hailing from Stamford, Connecticut, this Yale graduate served as state attorney general from 1983 to 89 and as a senator for almost a quarter century. In 2000, he even ran as the nominee for vice president on the 2000 Democratic ticket with Al Gore. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm here to support John McCain because country matters more than party. So when the staunchly Democratic Lieberman publicly supported Republican John McCain in the 2008 presidential election, heads snapped in amazement. My opponent uh, had a, a pickup truck which went around, followed me everywhere in uh, Connecticut that year, which had two replicas, one of President Bush and one of me, and we were embracing each other. And that was just supposed to be enough. <laughs> Lieberman angered many in his party with his criticism of Democratic candidate Obama's experience and leadership, and his support of McCain's view of the war on terror. If you let a dictator mass murder his people and you turn away from it, yep. he's gonna keep going. Lieberman even went so far as to raise questions about Obama's loyalty to the country, leading some to call him a traitor to his party. Which party do you feel closer to today? <laughs> Well, I, I actually am most comfortable as an independent, and I think I'm probably reflective of maybe not a majority of people in the country, but a plurality anyway. Number nine, Benito Mussolini. Ed allora, che comincia la storia d'Italia. Prior to 1914, this Italian political journalist was one of the most prominent members of the Italian Socialist Party. However, in 1914, at the outset of World War I, he publicly denounced socialism, turned his back on the working class, and introduced the fascist movement in Italy. In 1922, in the midst of protests in his country, King Victor Emmanuel III handed power over to Mussolini in an effort to avoid civil war. Now prime minister, it wasn't long before Mussolini transformed the government into a dictatorship. Il Duce, or the leader as he was called, became known for his tyranny and for his support of the Nazi regime in Germany. Number eight, Aldrich Ames. It amounted really to kind of greed and folly. Simple as that. Until the mid-1980s, heavy drinking, extramarital affairs, and usually mediocre performance at work were the most serious transgressions of this former counterintelligence officer and analyst. But between 1985 and his arrest in 1994, he earned over $4.5 million by releasing sensitive counterintelligence information to Russia and the Soviet Union. That allowed him to buy a half million dollar home, cash, drive a Jaguar, dress in $1,500 Italian suits. And that this new affluence just happened to coincide with the loss of America's most valuable spies inside the Soviet Union. Ames Information Exchange included the names of practically every American spy in operation against them. It is impossible to overestimate the amount of the, of the damage or the consequences or our own surprise. His treasonous actions compromised more than 100 intelligence operations and contributed to the deaths of at least 10 American agents. He's currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. What I did to those men, the situation of their families and, and others, and this, is, and this is and the kind of shame and the kind of remorse that I feel is something that, that, that is and, and I think always will be intensely personal. Number seven, Wang Qingwei. Today, he is viewed by some as the most destructive traitor in China's history. 
Originally a politician and a member of the leftist Kuomintang party, he began to repeal his support after he failed to secure leadership of the party following the death of Sun Yat-sen. When a bloody war between China and Japan finally erupted in 1937, Wang backed Japan's plans for an armistice and quickly switched sides to ally with the Japanese. He went on to become the puppet leader of the government that China had set up in Nanjing, eastern China. Number 6. Matahari Madame Matahari's car, please. A sultry exotic dancer and escort of Frisian descent, Matahari won fame for her flirtatious and flamboyant lifestyle and performances during the 1900s. She was physically outstanding from childhood. One of her friends once called her an orchid in a field of dandelions, and I think that's a remarkably apt description of what she must have looked like. Because of her celebrity status and her Dutch ancestry, she was able to cross national borders without much trouble, though she eventually came under suspicion, and with good reason. It was later revealed that in 1915 she became a prolific German agent, known by the codename H21. According to some estimates, her reports to the Germans caused the deaths of some 50,000 soldiers. And in 1917, she was executed by a French firing squad. <laughs> Number 5. Guy Fox. I know his name was Guy Fawkes. And I know in 1605 he attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. But who was he really? Born in York and raised an Anglican, Fox converted to Catholicism relatively early in life and developed anti-Protestant sympathies. It wasn't long before he found a like-minded group of conspirators looking to assassinate King James I and restore Catholicism as the religion of the land. He became a key figure in the gunpowder plot of 1605, which sought to blow up English Parliament. Fox was charged with safeguarding the explosives, which had been amassed in the cellar beneath the House of Lords. However, he was captured and tortured, eventually dying on January 31st the following year. Every November 5th, England celebrates Guy Fox Day with a bonfire and a burning in effigy of the notorious traitor. Number 4. Vitkin Kvishling A Norwegian politician who rose from being a successful military man to becoming the Minister of Defense, Kvishling's power had all but faded by the time the Nazis invaded Norway in 1940. As a strong admirer of Adolf Hitler and fascism, he met with the German dictator to betray information about Norwegian military strategy. Then, as the occupation of Norway took place, Kvishling overthrew the government with Nazi backing and established himself as the minister-president. In 1945, the Nazi supporter was charged with embezzlement, murder and high treason, and was subsequently executed. Right until the moment of death, Vitkin Quisling remained convinced he had done nothing wrong. But the truth was different. In fact, he was almost driven mad by his own contradictions. Number 3. Benedict Arnold during the American Revolutionary War, Arnold established himself as a soldier of intellect and courage, so much so that he was promoted to the rank of general for the Americans. However, discontent with his status in the military and with the political decisions of the US, he began negotiating secretly with the British and decided that he would turn over the fort at West Point that was under his command to British troops. The plot was discovered and foiled, and Arnold narrowly escaped arrest. Publicly switching loyalty, he continued to fight against the Americans during the rest of the war. But Washington went along with the verdict, and he was hanged. He struggled briefly, dangling, and then he was dead. Number 2. Marcus Unius Brutus the Younger this senator in the ancient Roman Republic was one of only three people in Dante's epic poem Inferno considered so evil that he was to be chewed in the mouth of Satan in the center of hell forever. Brutus initially warred against the Roman general and consul Julius Caesar. However, he was pardoned and later appointed as praetor and governor of Gaul by the man who came to be his friend. Fearing Caesar's rise to power, he joined several other conspirators who shared his concerns. 
In one of the most famous betrayals in history, they stabbed the dictator to death in the Senate on the Ides of March in 44 BC. As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Hansen, on average, received $30,000 per year for betraying one's country, for selling secrets worth billions of dollars, for putting his own life at risk, chunk change. At 12.42 p.m., the bunker explodes with a tremendous roar. It was as if, Stauffenberg said later, a 155 millimeter shell had hit it directly. Stauffenberg is certain that no one will survive the explosion. The full story of the Cambridge Five may never be known. What is known is that the Cambridge Five will go down in history as one of the greatest spy rings of the 20th century. This man has been called the most valuable KGB spy in history. The damage he caused the United States is so great that experts on Soviet intelligence say if war had broken out in the 1970s, the Kremlin would have won. Number one, Judas Iscariot. Dante considered him history's most notorious traitor, choosing to ensnare him in the jaws of Satan's central head in the Inferno. Iscariot was one of Jesus of Nazareth's 12 apostles, confidants with a special relationship to the charismatic religious figure. Despite the bond of trust that existed between Jesus and the apostles, Judas collaborated with those whom considered Jesus dangerous. Identifying him with a kiss and leading to his subsequent execution by direct order of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. To this day, the name Judas is synonymous with the idea of a traitor in popular culture. Jesus is my virtue, and Judas is the demon I cling to. And all apparently for 30 pieces of silver. Do you agree with our list? Which historical traitors do you think deserve the most notoriety? And Benedict's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I am going to betray the United States. For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. To be a Quisling is to be a Judas.